When is the last time we had a big special effects filled blockbuster with a little bit of heart? Well, there is one on Netflix right now called Space Sweepers that I'm really excited to talk about. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Space Sweepers dropped on Netflix yesterday. This film was purchased by Netflix a while back. I was excited, a little bit hesitant, curious to see what it would hold. Uh, but there are a lot of things about this film that are unexpected and some things that I can't wait to talk about. Also, some spoilers that I may even hold over to another video. So if you guys like this review, be sure to let me know. Drop your thumbs up down below and let's get right into it. So set in 2092, Spaceship Victory is one of many that live off of salvaging space debris. After successfully snatching a crashed ship shuttle in the latest debris chase, Victory's crew finds a seven-year-old girl inside. They realize that she's the human-like robot wanted by the UTS space guards and decide to demand ransom in exchange. And to give us the scale of something this massive, a world so expansive lore that is actually really interesting, you have to have interesting characters. You have to have fascinating, maybe not backstories for every single person, but something there to allow us to gravitate toward that team. And while maybe we didn't get a lot at first, as we go through the film, we do start to get that character development. At the halfway point, there are actually a few scenes that do give us the buildup that we are looking for. It may not be told in the way that you expect, and it may not even be told in a way that makes a lot of people happy in terms of critical analysis, but the amount of fun and energy and just creativity of this movie is what I have to give it kudos for. And there is a lot throughout. From a visual perspective, it is, again, just massive and crazy. Some of the CGI at times wasn't the best, but I would say for the most part, 90% of the film looked outstanding. And I was a bit jealous for those who have been able to see this on the big screen uh, because I, I just think it's suited for that so well. But about the crew, you have this genius pilot named Teho, and the first character that came to my mind uh, was Han Solo. Now, two drastically different characters in terms of personality, but the way that they can maneuver around certain things and the fact that he's just the best of the best, well, there are comparisons to be made. Then you have this ex-space pirate, Captain Jang, who is the tough captain. She is ruthless at times, but it makes for an interesting character. Our engineer called Uncle Tiger in the movie is uh, a fascinating character, but when you start to peel back the layers, you realize that he is genuinely sweet. And the fourth member is the one that I actually got the most excited about, and the one that uh, was the most intriguing for me throughout the film. This is a reprogrammed military robot, and there's a lot to this character in terms of exploration, growing, building. And it does kind of remind you of something like a Rogue One with K2SO, how uh, used to be bad, now is good. But there is a lot to that backstory, and again, you do have to wait on it, right? And we're not necessarily used to a story playing out like that. But once it gets there and the crew comes together and you realize that this is a team and they go on these numerous adventures and it may even be too much for one movie. But again, every single subplot that happened throughout this film, I was interested in. It could be the grand visuals. It could be just the way it comes together. But it's also a different method almost of telling a story like this because uh, there is that sense of cheese within the film and there's some slapsticky humor absolutely and you think to yourself this grand epic adventure with these characters they're on this mission and their goal at the beginning of this film is to find money they have to pay off debts that they otherwise would not have a chance to pay off and so they encounter a way to do that in this movie and all of those stakes being so high you wouldn't think that the humor would belong within this film and while i didn't love all of the slapsticky humor and it does indeed get a bit too cheesy at times it's actually part of the magic, in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot to this film, what makes it click, uh, but it's the combination of different genres and emotions, the way it all comes together, not to make it feel convoluted at the end of the day, but more so to make it feel like, crazy enough, this big cohesive experience. And not everyone's going to feel that way. I've seen a lot of, or at least a little bit of negativity toward this film, uh, but there was something about it that felt so fresh about concepts so familiar that made it all click. And I love the world. It almost feels like an Elysium where uh, Earth cannot be lived in or it's slowly coming to that point and you have 
all of the elites in this world living on this planet, and of course those in space trying to scrounge and make money, and uh, we see that with our crew engaging in all of these events. We start out with this huge action-packed scene at the beginning with the crazy visuals, and I was kind of waiting on some sort of character development because we are really thrown into this situation, and we are not used to that, especially with a lot of these American blockbusters, because this is, of course, a Korean film. And with that, there is the dubbed route and the subbed route. Of course, I go subbed, uh, but I always take a scene or two to uh, watch the dubbing, and with this film, if you watch dubbing all the way through, I don't know if that's the way to watch it, because I wasn't a huge fan of the dubbing, just the few scenes that I saw. It didn't quite connect with me like the subbing did. One, I like getting the performances from the characters, but two, I just don't feel like it did its job, what it was trying to convey in terms of emotions and the translations. Not that the voices were bad, but it was the translations. It didn't quite work for me. So, subbing method, in my opinion, is the way to go. Now, the film does need a better villain. A more fleshed out villain, uh, where the motivations were unclear. I wasn't able to connect with that side of the story as much. Thankfully, our crew is the focus here, and every sub-adventure that they get themselves into, I was at least invested in. And again, it's just, it's such a different film. I don't think it's going to work for everyone, but... The magic, for some reason, and I'm not going to say, wow, this is a film that's going to get a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not, just because of the kind of movie that it is. But sometimes I have a soft spot for these kinds of films, and there's a lot here that works really well. Uh, and in terms of Korean content that I have been able to see, I think it ranks up there on an emotional level. There's a lot of emotion to be had here. You're going to get sad, you're going to get happy, and you're going to be invested in our characters if you are not you're not willing to wait to that halfway point where we start getting a lot of that backstory, uh, then I completely understand why it didn't work for you. But for me, I found this to be a really fun experience. I did. So again, thank you guys for watching this review. This film is on Netflix right now, and if you enjoyed this review, be sure to drop a thumbs up. Space Sweepers may not bring anything new to the table, but the film is a nice blend of exciting action, interesting lore, and fun characters. And that's what you're looking for with a movie like this. Fun. I'm going to 70%. A 7 out of 10 for Space Sweepers. Um, a nice surprise. It's been a while since I've had a blockbuster, so that may be part of it. Uh, but it was just nice to sit back, enjoy this with the sound design and the visuals and a pretty cool story. So, all right. Space Sweepers on Netflix. Really nice surprise. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Austin, come in, Austin. This isn't real. This isn't real, man. You gotta snap out of it. Enough with the intros, dude. They're not funny. Quit doing it.